Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a quick look at and installing the RTR bumper vent. This is available for all 2018 and newer GT and EcoBoost Mustangs. You should be checking this out for your new S550 if you really want that track-inspired RTR styling at your front end. Keep in mind guys, these are something that you are exclusively seeing on those RTR spec one, two, and three Mustangs that hit the dealership lots in very limited quantities. If you're not really familiar with what or who RTR is, RTR, or Ready to Rock, is a brand founded by none other than Vaughn Gittin Jr. himself. Vaughn is a very well-known household name in the Mustang community, in the drift community. You've seen him at Formula D, you've seen him all over the track, and these are something that you'd catch on his own Mustang. Now these vents are not just an exterior styling part. I mean, obviously they look pretty badass on the front end. They blend in really well with what Ford has done with the front end redesign on the 2018 and 2019 Mustang, but they are also functional. If you look down here, you're getting a new vent on the inside of this veined portion on the outside. That new vent is opening up that airflow. It still has that honeycomb pattern, but it isn't blocked off a lot as much as your factory one would be. Since it is opening up that airflow and you're adding this vein to the front end, it's directing the air directly through this open end, straight in to your braking system. It's feeding straight up into your engine bay, and this is gonna be very beneficial in increasing your cooling capacity. As far as the materials go, this is an injection molded TPO, which is essentially a really hard plastic. It is impact resistant, which is good since it is on the front end here. It's also got that grained black textured finish. That is gonna blend in almost identically with your chin spoiler from the factory. So everything really blends in very, very well together. And like I said, you are replacing this interior vent. Also has that grained material texture on it. Looks really good, feels really good. Definitely a high quality material. And it fits really well into this area below your accent light. Now, you're not gonna have to do any modifications. You're not drilling, you're not doing anything like that. Once you have the bumper off, you'll be able to pop out your factory vent once this light is out of the way. It's really just a couple of bolts on the inside. Really, the most time you'll be spending is getting that bumper off. Before we get into that installation, I wanna let you know this kit is gonna come in right around the $200 mark. It's a pretty common price tag for a lot of the RTR parts. There's a lot of RTR parts you can get to match up with this. You can get the RTR upper and lower grills, the lights that'll go in that upper grill, so you can really transform the front end of your GT or EcoBoost to match those spec one, two, and three options from the RTR packages. With that in mind, guys, install gets a soft two out of three wrenches simply because it does require you to remove that front bumper. Something you can do very easily in the driveway at home. You just wanna make sure you're taking some caution because you don't wanna damage any of the clips holding that front bumper on. It'll take you about two hours from start to finish to get that bumper off. Swap out that factory vent here and pop the RTR option in and then get everything back in one piece. I wanna show you guys how it's done step by step throughout the process, so let's get to it. Tools used in this install include a cordless impact, ratchet, five and a half millimeter socket, seven, eight, and 10 millimeter deep sockets, flathead screwdriver, and a panel removal tool. All right, to kick off our uninstall, we're gonna have to start with our car up in the air. Now, I'm working with a lift. If it makes your life easier, you might be working in your driveway with some jacks and jack stands. If that is the case, just make sure you have it properly supported so you can access your belly shield. Now, we're gonna have to remove this whole thing, which is held on by somewhere around 17 or 18 seven millimeter bolts or screws going all along the chin splitter, going all across the belly pan and holding into the wheel well liners. So what we're gonna do is start here with my impact gun and my seven millimeter socket. I'm gonna start from this corner and work my way around. Next step here, I'm gonna grab my panel removal tool, which is gonna be a very useful tool in this whole entire process. It's gonna pop off these plastic rivets or the push pin clips that you see all around the car. There's a couple of them here on the belly shield and we're gonna reuse this tool again under the hood to take that radiator shroud off. Now, if you don't have one of these, a flathead screwdriver works as well, but this is a little bit more easy to use. Slide that in, pop off the first portion, pop off the second. Same thing on this side. Squeeze it right underneath and pop them off. Now there's a couple more of these inside each of the wheel wells. All 
All right, same thing on the other side. All right, now that we have all that removed, it's time to pop our belly pan out of place. We're gonna use the panel removal tool under the hood to remove the push pins on our radiator shroud. It's all right if they come apart, you can just pop them right back in. All right, there's four more on the other side. All right, now we can pop the whole thing off. All right, next up, we got the radiator shroud out of the way. We have a good amount of bolts going straight across, holding our bumper to the frame. The one on each end is a five and a half millimeter. So we've got that on our impact gun. The rest of them are eight mil. So we're gonna start here at the end, get that five and a half off, swap that socket over to our eight mil, and now we're gonna pop the rest of them. All right, swap that socket back on over to the five and a half to get the last one. Next step here, we've got our car back up in the air. We're turning our wheels so we can get better access to the corner here of this wheel well liner. Now there's two more tabs, one here and one on the inside of this little indent. You don't really need a tool for this one. Actually, if you just wanna push the center, it'll click in and release that lock so you can just pull them straight out. Again, there's one right in here, push in that center you can start to like wiggle the sides so that it'll loosen up, pull it out. From here, we can peel back the wheel well liner to give us access to the stud block right here that has two 10 millimeter nuts holding your bumper to the fender. We're gonna unbolt these two from the stud block, pop this off of the fender, and then repeat it for the other side. All right, so we've got our quarter inch ratchet and our 10 millimeter deep socket. Just work it back and forth a little bit. You don't have to ratchet this whole thing off the entire way. You can actually just loosen it up just to pop it off with your fingers. All right, once you get the front one off, there's one right behind it as well. All right, once you have those off of the studs, you can just gently pull straight down. There's a Christmas tree clip right in the middle hole to get on. So that's gonna be a little bit more resistant. Just pull straight down and you'll get it off. Now repeat this for the other side. Next step here, we can just pop our bumper out of place. So we're gonna lift up, pull straight back, and we're actually gonna set this on the floor. You wanna make sure before you pull it too far away that you're coming over to the fog lights, pinching and disconnecting them. Right on those accent lights, pinch, pull back on the harness. Now we can set our bumper on our table. We got our bumper on our table. Now it's time to take our accent or fog lights off. These are gonna be popped completely off of our bumper to access that bumper vent underneath of this channel here. This is what channels that airflow once it comes through that vent. So what we're gonna do is grab our seven millimeter deep socket. We're gonna pop off three screws, one, two, and one underneath to pull this completely out of the way. All right, do the same thing on the other side. All right, next up, we're gonna remove our bumper vent. Now that's behind this bumper support. All it is is tabs from the bumper itself holding it on between the plastic. You're gonna pinch those back and pull backward on your bumper vent. So that disengaged this tab here. There's another tab on this side and a few underneath. You can use a flathead screwdriver if it helps you out. All right, this one on the back here is disengaged. Go underneath. All 
All right, now we can grab our RTR vent and put that into place. Once you have that in place, you're gonna push down on the tabs to lock them into the same position they were from the factory. Next up, we're gonna take that RTR bumper vent vein and we're gonna put that into place from the outside of the bumper. Now there's three open holes on that new bumper vent we just put in place and that'll sit this in nicely. They also include three screws for each side. The screws are gonna go right in through here. That'll secure that vein to the vent itself. You wanna make sure that you're putting this vein in place before you put your accent light back onto the bumper. I'll show you why in just a second. This will go straight through the inside and then again from the bottom. Grab your seven millimeter socket and tighten those down. Now, as you can see at the top of this vein here is 3M. The 3M you wanna peel off the backing and this will stick to the bottom side of your accent light. So we're gonna take that accent light, make sure you're also cleaning off the bottom portion of that so it gets a nice, nice finish. You wanna take some alcohol wipes, wipe that off if you need to, and then you're gonna put this right back into position. Once we have that bolted in, we'll be able to put pressure on that 3M to get it to stick. But for now, get those factory screws and tighten these back down. All right, now from the outside, you're gonna push down slightly on your light and push up on the RTR vent just to get that to get a nice good bond. Put a lot of pressure on it and let it stick together. And then repeat this whole process for the opposite side of the bumper. Putting your light back in before you use that 3M, you can use the alcohol wipe provided in the kit. That'll clean it off, making sure you get a really good bond. You also have adhesion promoter in the kit as well if you wanna make sure it stays put on the bottom of that light. We're gonna actually take this off, so we're not gonna use the adhesion promoter, but if you want it permanently on there, it's a good idea to use. Grab that alcohol wipe and just clean off that area. And now we can pop our light back in. All right, our next step here is to put our bumper back on our 2018. Once you have the top sitting in the tabs, you can come back down to the side and attach the wheel well. All right, now we're gonna go back down and tighten down all of the screws that we took off of the top. We're gonna start here on the end with our five and a half millimeter. Tighten that down. Now, if you remember, we switch over to our eight millimeter socket and then tighten down the rest, then switch back over at the other end. Now we can do our radiator shroud. Now before we get that top radiator shroud back in place, you have this open hole here that you wanna take advantage of to plug back in those accent lights that we just removed in order to install our RTR vents. So you're gonna go straight down here, grab that harness, and plug it into the back of the light. Obviously this is something you can do with the bumper off car. I like to have it all the way attached before I go in because it is easily accessible. Do the same thing over here. All right, now we can lay our shroud back in place. Just wanna find where it lays perfectly flat. There we go. And we're gonna replace those plastic rivets. Push one down, push that plunger.
All right, with the last one wrapped up, we can shut our hood and then get to work attaching the bumper to the side fenders inside the wheel wells. All right, car's back up in the air. We've got our tire rotated the opposite way. We're gonna pull back that wheel well liner, grab our 10 millimeter nuts and tighten them down to that stud block. And push that stud block all the way through, tighten it down by hand and then grab your 10 millimeter deep socket and tighten it down. Okay, now we're gonna put that wheel well back in place. Grab those push pin clips. Perfect, repeat this for the other side. All right, the next step in our process is our belly pan. So we're gonna pop this back up in this place, grab our seven millimeter deep socket and tighten down all of those screws. Last step of this entire process here, I have four push pit clips left. There's two in each of the wheel wells that you wanna make sure you're putting back before you lower your car back to the ground. Pop that into place there. Got one more on the end. And then finally, this side. Perfect, we can drop this back on the ground and we're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install of the RTR front bumper vents, which you see here on our 2018 EcoBoost. You can get yours to really bring out that RTR track-inspired styling right here at AmericanMuscle.com.